In this video, we'll discuss jigs for landing the punch. In all, we created nine jigs for aligning our plugs. All of them are simply centering jigs. They don't set the size or the alignment of the plug to be used, but they're a lot easier to make. This is the square alignment jig that we used on our prototype chairs. Rather than using a lot of guesswork to figure out how big of plugs we wanted and the exact locations of those plugs, I took some stick-on labels, colored it black with magic marker, and then used my hole punch to punch out the exact size of those different shapes that I had. And that way I can just relocate these slightly if I wanted to. If I felt that was too close or too far away, I could move it further in. And uh, you can see where it's now in a different location than that. And that way I don't mess up my expensive sapili by placing these plugs. I can also determine then what I decide is a pleasing pattern. The center one here is slightly lower than the outside two. And uh, these are centered in each of the spindles. On the front of the chair leg, uh, we're going with the smaller pin on the top and the wider pin on the bottom. So this is my 3 16 and this is a quarter inch plug, but um, to still give a variety. This is where the shorter tenon is and the longer tenon on the bottom. Similarly, on the side, using that same principle, those are alternated with the big plug on the top and the smaller one on the bottom. They're set at the same distance in and in the center of those tenons. So on the back of the chair, back leg of the chair, it's also big on the top and smaller on the bottom. On the lower parts of the leg, the smaller 3 16 plugs are being used on each end of the stretcher as well as in the center of where the crossbar joins in. But which way should the square peg be oriented? In line with the crossbar or in line with the side stretcher rails? We decided in line with the stretchers. Recently, we discovered that the Greens answered that question on the Thorson chairs with a round peg. Brilliant. The simplest ones I took from the uh, stock front leg shape. You can see where this matches up with the wider angle side of the chair, and this matches up with the narrower side of the chair. I smoothed off the edges a bit to make it more comfortable to hold my hand. So this template is going to help me locate the center of the holes for the uh, front leg punches. And it goes, uh, this will be like the left side of the chair looking at you, um, the inside, and going to the back. So my mortises will be on this side and on this back side. If that's my chair, then I would line up, since this is the left, line this up with a mortise on the top and the bottom. And that will set where the long tenon and short tenon match up with a quarter inch and the three tenths or three sixteenths of an inch. And that'll be my two plug positions, setting the inside one at about three eighths of an inch and the outside one at about a half an inch into the center. For the side, my mortise is now in the back, so I flip this over, still on the left side, match this up to my mortise, and that'll identify where the other plugs will go, putting the short tenon on the top on the side and the long tenon on the bottom. For the lower stretcher in the front, I have here a leg that I used. Um, I'm still using on the front for the stretchers the original template that I made. This fits into the mortise so that it, it's solid and it locates it right where it needs to be. It's a 3 16 of an inch punch and this is where my hole will go in. Um, identifying where this plug is to be set. Again, that's about um, 3 eighths of an inch in from the outside edge to the center of the hole. So that's my front leg. For the back leg, I'll address the sides first. 
I was able to use the sharper pointed edge of my leg template to set these lower stretcher and the side angles that fits on here correctly. So by lining this up again, same as in the front, line my jig up with the mortise and that determines where my hole then will be plunged. For the back side, this is going to fit on perfectly for this angle. Same thing, I line it up with the mortise and this identifies short tenon on the top, long tenon on the bottom for the side. For the left side, I simply rotate it the other direction and that will identify those positions the same way. For the back side of the back legs, we have a right leg here where I line up this, the uh, jig in the mortise so that it doesn't move and that's going to line up my 3 16 and quarter inch center punch for those plugs. I do have a separate template for the left side. For the top, it's a little bit more tricky. I have this flared out angle that was done by hand, so it's not necessarily always in the same place. And I do want to make sure that my plugs are set the same distance in from this inside edge so that it looks the same on all the pieces. Additionally, I want to make sure that the bottom of my punch is lined up with the seat rail and that um, I don't have that lined up at an angle with the side of the chair. You can see that this is going to line up with a mortise on the inside. I have a bit of a lip here that presses against the mortise on the inside and keeps it square with what I already plowed in as um, a perpendicular line to my seat rail. So that's going to hold this square and you can see where that angle is not quite the same as if I just line this up with the side. They're slightly different. Uh, I want to make sure that it's correctly lined up again with the uh, parallel with the seat. So when we did the prototype chair, we thought we would use the same size largest 5 16 inch square punch for both of the top crest rails. And after we got thinking about it, we decided we really like to echo the design that we had on the chair rails and use a smaller one and a larger one on the top. So these are just those stick-on pieces. So I have that I need these both uh, on the back. I wrote in that I need seven eighths of an inch to either side of the jig. So I'll set this at seven eighths of an inch. Okay, so that's my offset for each side from the side of the hole, seven eighths of an inch. Just to make sure it's exactly squared. Press down on the top, make sure it's lined up against the mortise on the inside. And this is my position for each of those. And the bottom punch is going to be at 9 16 of an inch in. Of course, it'll go much faster when I can do several of these at one time. This would be the center of the quarter inch hole. And the top one is 3 quarters of an inch in. So I'll set my gauge at 3 quarters. And I'll probably just have a couple of these set up so that I can just go through them and not have to reset everything all the time. That would be the center for the outside one. So I'll line up my punch with where I designated the center. That will keep my bit from wandering. Line up my bit in the hole that I punched. Here's my saddle square to ensure it's square with my leg. That puts it right there. Give it four taps. I'm aiming for this bit to go in, the punch to go in 
perpendicular to this angled surface, so it's a little bit not perpendicular to what you're seeing here. And the cloth helps uh, prevent a little bit of the bruising that might otherwise happen. And again, you can see where it's not square with the side, it's off a little bit on the angle, but it should be perpendicular or parallel with my chair seat. For the larger plug, I have this marked. And that one left the material in, so I'm going to have to pick that out. I pick. So there's my alignment for the holes at the top. So how are these made? I After I cut them out of the leg piece, scrap leg, um, I simply measured from the inside where each of those went and how far down in, um, splitting the difference to make sure that they went centered about in my t each of my tenons. In this case, um, three quarters of an inch in on each one so that when I flip it over they're still lined up correctly with each other. Um, the centered for the quarter inch is at five eighths of an inch. The three sixteenths inch plunged hole is at three eighths of an inch in. And I did the same on the opposite side. The one thing to remember is you want 3 sixteenths inch on the top on both of them and on the bottom on both of them the quarter inch. Otherwise you'd have the same thing as you flip it over. You want to make sure you can do left and right. Did the same thing for the front and it makes it very easy to see how far in those holes are going to be from the uh, center points on my chair. Saddle square is pretty self-explanatory. This is the older jig design that fits into the housing mortise for alignment. It was harder to create these, and it isn't important for them to register against the bottom of a housing mortise like for the crest rail. So I would strongly suggest just going with something that fits with your chair design and the angles that you have that's simple like this that you can easily flip over and use anywhere. This is really a matter of personal preference on design choice. We decided we liked best not the setup using three plugs in the center and the larger plugs in the center, but rather we went to using the quarter inch plugs on the outside as I have here. And we're planning on using two 3 16 inch plugs in the center that more closely reflects the rest of the design and layout for our plugs on the rest of the chair. The way these templates are made again are they're just simply some 90 degree blocks that I cut out on the bandsaw and I measured from the inside. Uh, the width matches my mortises on the um, that are receiving the spindle and the center back splat. Here I have one of the crest rails that's been sanded down to 220 grit and it's ready to receive the mortises for the plugs. And because this is squared off to the side, I don't have to do any lining up other than ensuring that my jig is matched in that hole and held tight against the crest rail bottom and mark the center. Again, same thing here, and mark the center. 3 16 So those are where my centers for each of these will go. I do have to keep them square to the face, and this is all parallel with the bottom of the seat, so uh, I can just square it from the side. The outside ones being quarter inch. The uh, divot helps hold my bit in place as I align the square punch. Quarter inch for my bit. 
And I just realized that because this is going to go through, I don't want to destroy the inside of there. Uh, because this is a fairly thin wall, again, I want to have some sort of a spacer like this block that I've made to fit in there to keep everything from breaking through on me. Got quite a ways to go down in. And then for the smaller ones, my 3 16 which I've marked. I'll continue like that with the rest of my pieces, so get them all done.